This podcast is brought to you by Salt River Pictures. Hi, Lloyd. A little slow tonight, isn't it? Hello there. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. They are target. Dylan. Son of a bitch. Welcome to the Salt River Movie Club. Hello and welcome back to the Salt River Movie Club. This is episode four of SMRC or the Salt River Movie Club as it is more formally known. Uh, this is a podcast about movies. We are three members of the band Salt River Shakedown. We do blues rock, classic rock, that kind of thing. However, this podcast is not about that band. This podcast is about movies, movies we like and sometimes movies that we don't like. Uh, today we're watching a movie that none of us have seen, so we will decide later whether or not it's a movie we like or don't like. Uh, yes. We shall see. Uh, but yes, joining me today uh, is guitarist extraordinaire with his is his what what color shirt is that? Would you what would you call that this, shirt? Like yeah, this, what color would you call that? Green this plaid. This is aubergine green. Ah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is Al Al, Al-, Al- in the aubergine green over there. Uh, how are you? How are you doing today? I am good. How how is yourself? I am alright. I'm alright. All right, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, and. Uh, and then over here in this corner, we have the purple-haired menace himself wearing a very fetching Jurassic Park t-shirt. <laughs> because he's all about the brand. <laughs> it's, it's Mr. Sean Kilner. How, you, see, how the devil are you? See, just quickly, you've taken away the intro, so I can't say that I'm Toto the dog anymore. I know I have. It's exactly why I've done it. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm a bit tired, but it's okay. Good. That's how we like you. So we, you, you're underprepared. A bit tired, but okay. <laughs> the best All right. Sean. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, yes, uh, thank you uh, to anyone that's been downloading the podcast so far. Um, I Last time I checked, we had something like 55 overall downloads over the first three episodes. So that's that's all right. For all right, the yeah. podcast, yeah, no. Yes. Um, uh, I don't know what platforms that included either. I think that might just be Podbean. So like the, okay. I don't know if that includes like Spotify and Apple and all those things. But yes, uh, thank you for tuning into the first three episodes. The last episode was our review of the year, the terrible year 2020. Um, Yay. Our two-hour megalodon of an episode. <laughs> megalodon. <laughs> Which uh, the was sword. a lot of fun. Yeah, the super sword. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, thank you for listening to that. And if you made it through the episodes, well done Cheers. to you. Cheers. Uh, let's start with what we usually do on our proper movie episodes, which we've only done one of so far. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what have we been watching or reading or listening to recently? Get your phone Alex. off. What have I, Sorry. That- <laughs> what have I been watching? I have started a new TV series, which is absolutely kick-ass. Cobra Kai. It's so good. <laughs> it is so, so, so funny. It's just like nice. full of absolute 80s cheese and it's like... It's so good. It's honestly great. <laughs> like you go into it thinking, "Oh, this is gonna be like guff," but it's actually like amazing. Oh, good. I'm yeah. glad. No, I've heard, I've heard a lot of good things about it's that. It's really funny. Um, yeah, it started out as a YouTube Red series, if I remember right. Is that true? Or did it? I don't know. I'm pr- I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it yeah, did. Like, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. Oh, that that uh, it YouTube did. Red. That's a failure and a half in it. I know, <laughs> I know, but that's exactly why Netflix bought it because apparently it's good. So yeah, no, it's brilliant. But, uh, really good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Has, has this replaced Clone Wars, or are you still what doing Clone Wars? I've I've given Clone Wars a wee break just because I'm I'm nearing I'm nearing the end, and I just want to savor it a wee bit before oh, okay, I'm like, okay, do you okay. know what I mean? You know, when you get to the end of the series and you're like, hang on a bit, this is going to be yeah, over cool, soon. Yeah. So okay, but so I'm, what is so what you want? You're on like season six. I'm on season six. Just did Ahsoka's kind of big arc, and she's nah, okay, she's cool. left, and then then it's just kind of the rest of them. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. Mm. We, we yeah, shall okay. see. Nice. Oh, you got some stuff to see. Sean, uh, what about you? What, what have you been watching recently? Hi. Um, <laughs> well, the only couple, I've, not really, I've not really done a lot, to be honest. I've done. The, uh, what are we laughing at? You're, oh, you're delayed as fuck happening? right now. You're right. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. It's it fine. Really just keep, keep going. Power through. Power through. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so what have I been up to? I've been playing through the Resident Evil games recently. I finished five, six, and I'm now currently on seven. <laughs> and I'm going to go back nice. and play uh, the remasters of one, two, and three. Um, 
What else we want? Oh yeah, uh, was it was it like three o'clock in the morning when you were like, by the way, one division's out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I yeah. was like, God damn it! I need to watch this now. <laughs> I've not watched that yet. So actually. yeah, I've watched I watched the first two episodes of One Division. It's it's so good. It's yeah. weird though. Yeah, it's meant to yeah, be. Like, yeah, it's to be strange. Yeah, no, I, 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 I watched that. I, well. I can't talk about it until you've watched it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it is good though. Like honestly, it's only two like two half hour episodes at the moment, and then Friday the next two are coming out. Is that right? Maybe. Uh, I I think it might just be one a week. From now on, right. I, I could be wrong. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think I, th- I think it's like season one of the Mandalorian did the same thing. Oh, uh, fair. oh did they release two at the same time as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's good. You should give that a watch. Aye. Uh, yeah, that is that is one of my what have I been watching? I, I was watching that the other night. It is very very good and weird as fuck. Like way bolder yeah. and weirder than you'd expect the first major Marvel show to be. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, they've had other yeah. shows though, eh? They've got Shield, yeah, no. Shield and all that, and Agents of Shield and Agent Carter and things like that, which are but mm. they're, they're they're both good shows, but they are a bit more what you'd expect from this kind of show. Mm-hmm. And they were oh. and they were a little bit more like network TV kind of shows, like they were a little more low budget and kind of yeah. like, a bit, pre- a bit predictable know. kind of thing. They were very TV ish, you yeah, know? yeah. Uh, um, whereas this is really strange. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is like far f- outfield. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's it's really kind of brave and like the fact that the first three episodes really do nothing to advance the overall plot you're just yeah, yeah. literally watching a sitcom mm. <laughs> yeah yeah totally uh, <laughs> it's like it's kind of similar with the mandalorian how the, like the plot moves so slowly as well yeah 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 it's yeah. just cool they're just really um, milking it like <laughs> the whole time yeah yeah totally. oh, yeah um there's there's hints of things going on it's quite creepy as well as so it's like quite unsettling yeah to watch. there's yeah. so many bits where i was like uh <laughs> yeah 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 it's good. it reminds me of like some of the weirder kind of dream sequence episodes of buffy oh um, uh, yeah yeah and it's actually an actress for the anya from buffy isn't it it's actually in it hmm. um uh you watch, been watching anything else sean or just just wonder vision <laughs> uh well that's the only thing i've been watching i'm more okay. i've more been playing through the resident evil games at the moment excellent in preparation for a village coming out soon and the two mm. i think it's two netflix shows and a movie as well yeah resident evil is kind of going a little it's, crazy get, right now. it's getting rebooted like hell <laughs> it's, yeah it's i'm cool. so excited yeah uh, i need to get caught up on all of them um there's two canonical been doing, musicals been... everyone <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah those, those, yeah if you do yourself a favor google, <laughs> yeah, like google the resident evil japanese musicals they're incredible oh uh, they are amazing uh, <laughs> uh, what I, what I, other than one division, I've been watching through all the Harry Potter movies. Uh, I'm about I'm about halfway uh, through my Blu-ray box set of the Harry Potter movies. Oof. Uh, you have a Blu-ray yes. box set of the Harry Potter movies? As of recently, I bought it specifically for the purpose of uh. watching through them all because it's something I've been wanting to get. Anyway. Um, but Fair. yeah, it's uh, I yeah no, I'd forgotten how good actually they are. So you good. know, like it, it's been a while. The first two very much are kids' movies, but they're still yeah, a lot they're of fun. fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it was super nostalgic. Like, yeah, I'd forgotten quite how much of a tone shift the third one is. <laughs> like, it's quite what's, your, what's your right, Jake? What's your favorite Harry Potter movie? My, if I just remembering them all because I've, I've only watched the first four so far. Yeah, um, but remembering them all from watching them last time, I like Order of the Phoenix the best. Okay, um, Sean, favorite Harry Potter movie? I knew you were going. Damn it! <laughs> um, <laughs> probably Goblet of Fire or Phoenix. I like Phoenix a lot. Yeah, but I really I'm like kinda, Goblet of Fire as well. I'm kind of tied between Prisoner and Order of the Phoenix as well. It would mm. put like Prisoner of Azkaban is probably my second. See, place, see yeah. when you watch Prisoner of Azkaban, like you, you have just seen it. It's like the way it's done is just beautiful. Like, isn't it? Like, oh God! Yeah, see this, yeah. Like, oh yeah. It's insane. Like, it mm-hmm. just looks amazing. That it kind of lacks a wee bit plot wise compared to the book. Where they kind of mm. they kind of miss a few things that are a wee bit important with like the Marauders and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah there's like a that that, that yeah. kind of plot line. Because I, I, even I remember when I because I watched the movies first before I fully like I read some of the books when I was really young, but I couldn't remember mm-hmm. them. And then I watched the movies, so like I always kind of remember being a bit foggy with what was actually going on there by just seeing mm-hmm. the movies. Mm-hmm. And then I read the books and I was like, oh, hang on, like do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I gotta say, like, yeah, no, I gotta say, like, like I, I really like Goblet of Fire, but going from Prisoner of Azkaban to Goblet of Fire, we literally, literally watched them like mm-hmm. one night and then and the next night. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Goblet Fire is great, but it does feel like a step down after Prisoner of Azkaban. Yeah, Goblet is, Fire like, is brilliant, but it's also shite. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, no, I, I really like it. I like. I think that the la- the the twist section. Oh, no, of the I, end I, I do love movie it. It's yeah. so good, but. Uh, no, it just visually, it just feels like, oh, this is a bit boring compared to the last one because <laughs> the like, Prince of Escobar looks so good. Yeah, um, it's not even that. It's yeah, it's yeah, it's a bit boring visually, and it's like, apart from the dragons, they're pretty cool. But like, well, this is the thing. Like by any other standard, it's a good looking movie. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. It's um, more just the kind of teenage kind of romance bit that oh, it's obviously yeah. necessary, but it's, it just kind of makes you a bit like. Ugh. Yeah, yeah you, you could, they could spend a little less time on the yeah. ball, I feel. Like it, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> totally. Um, but yes, that's what I've been watching. I'm going to be watching Order of the Phoenix uh, in, at some point in the next couple of days. Uh, hopefully, it's as good as I remember being, because I, yeah, I do think that's the best one, but uh, we shall right, see. Right, be- best Umbridge impression laugh. Jake, oh. go. <laughs> well, the laugh. Oh, God, I can't um, remember the laugh now. I don't uh, she does the, she does, it's the throat, like the cough thing. She does the... <laughs> ah, ah, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like a velociraptor. <laughs> <laughs> she probably is a, a raptor in disguise, though. Let's face it. No, she's Hitler in disguise. We discussed this. Mm. Yeah, she's she's worse than Voldemort. I would she, agree. She actually, yeah. she's probably the the main, the baddest villain in Harry Potter. The baddest. <laughs> the baddest. baddest, baddest, baddest <laughs> no, that's Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith is the baddest bitch. That is true. Dame Maggie Smith. Uh, Yes. Anyway, uh, that is what we've been watching. Um, Yeah. Nice little catch up with you all. Uh, See, because this is how we see each other at the moment. I know. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, But yes. So today we are watching a movie that none of us have seen. We are watching Hereditary. It's a a spooky one. (laughs) The spooky, spooky, spooky boy. Somebody, Uh, I'm ready for a spook. Yes, uh, we've I heard a lot, lot of good things about this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, never, I've never seen this movie. It's directed by Ari Aster, um, who also directed uh, Midsummer, which came out last year, which I have seen. Um, I have mixed feelings on Midsummer. Mm-hmm. Um, I is it. extremely is technically extremely well made, good performances, all that, but it does that horror movie thing of nobody is likable for some reason. Uh, yeah and i always find that quite frustrating because i just like why do i care when they start dying yeah. um mm-hmm. and then uh and yeah also it has basically no plot at all <laughs> but that's that's another issue maybe, maybe they're just trying to make you root oh. for the villain <laughs> maybe i mean maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, like, uh, let's make these characters that just people hate so when they die it's like yeah <laughs> <laughs> finally yeah exactly. yeah as, as possible uh but yeah no we are watching this today um Yes. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing the trailers a lot for this. Uh, it's directed by Ari Aster, also written by Ari Aster. Stars Tony Collette, Gabriel Byrne. Oh, Gabriel Byrne, I like him. Uh, yes. Alex Wolf, Millie Shapiro, Christy Summerhays. Uh, score by Colin Stetson, which, yeah. like, when I was researching this the other day, was actually quite hard to find for some reason. Like, Ooh. I don't know why, but uh, I think he, I think he's I think it's quite an unusual score. I guess we'll, right, cool. we'll see later on. But uh, yeah, we shall uh, see. But yeah, that is what we're watching today. Uh, if you if you are unaware this podcast is a movie club you are encouraged to watch along uh, you were meant to watch it before the episode started but if you have not seen Hereditary pause uh, it and go uh, yeah <laughs> to, to, be fair, to be fair like the episode started and we haven't watched it yet so I think it's okay well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to it's fine uh, no if you want to join us you may, you can pause the episode right now go watch Hereditary it is available on Netflix assuming it hasn't vanished since the last time we checked <laughs> Don't do uh, this. Which is which is likely because it's Netflix and we're <laughs> talking about it. Um, but yes, uh, it should be available on Netflix. So uh, if you haven't seen it, go watch Hereditary. And then uh, after this, come and let us know what you think of it. But right now, we are about to have a spooky, spooky time. About uh, to embark. Yes, we are <laughs> indeed. Um, yeah, cool. Hereditary. Shall we? Let's do it. Let's do it. it let's yeah. Do it. See you in a bit. It's heartening to see so many strange new faces here today. I know my mom would be very touched and probably a little suspicious. My mother was a very secretive and private woman. It's Grandma. You know you were her favorite, right? Even when you're a little baby, she wouldn't let me feed you because she needed to feed you. She was a very difficult woman, which maybe explains me. 
I recognize you from your mother. What? Sometimes I swear I can feel them in the room. Oh my God! What was that? She isn't gone. Uh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we are back. Oh, well, uh, it's hereditary. All right, then. We've watched hereditary now. Don't watch this movie. <laughs> what the fuck, man? It's, what, it's is not that, that movie, it's bad. Man. It's, that was a lot to deal with in two hours. Um, okay. I have a right. lot of notes. Okay. Like, well, first things first. We, yes, we've just watched hereditary. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, you, probably, spoiler. you probably just heard a clip of the trailer. Yeah. Yes. Spoiler spoilers. Warning. We're mm-hmm. going full spoilers. That's what this podcast full is. Spoiler, From yeah. now on, just just watch it if you haven't. Yes. Pause right um, this very second. Yes, that is your warning over. <laughs> we now begin. First of all, just uh, what do we think? Like you don't have to give like a rating or anything, but like what 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 do we? I really we liked feel? it. I really liked it. Yeah, as a horror okay. movie, I really liked it. As an experience, it was fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> cool, Sean. Um, as a horror fan, it's very very good. Yeah, uh, it, is, it does keep you tense for most of it, or for when it when it wants to build, it does it really well. When it goes for the tense parts, it really hits you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Jacob. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I am the same. I, I, I really like this movie. Uh, it's, it's a little hard to process this mm. quickly, but uh, that is the point <laughs> of this podcast. So that's fine. Yeah, um, yeah I, right off the bat, it is a lot better than Midsummer. Yeah, than the, the movie you made after. We should um, we should watch that, some point. We yeah we should watch it at some point. The one thing I will say though is it's actually this has actually made me like Midsummer less because I mm-hmm. hadn't oh, realized really? they're very similar films in a lot of ways. Right, Ooh. so this is almost like him doing that but better kind of thing. Well, yeah, like it's a, it they're very similar thematically. They're both kind of about how religions and cults can use people's grief to like manipulate them and, mm-hmm. and like. And there's a lot of very similar themes and very similar moments as well. Yeah, yeah. But this this was much better, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, the midsummer is bad. I just it just yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's a bit weird. Um, so it was quite a strange experience seeing it in the, that way around. But yeah. Um, wow. So yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I have a lot of notes uh, right from the start. Great cinematography. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Should should we Holy have a shit. wee roundup of the plot? We should have a weird yes. of the plot. Thank you. Start Thank off. you, Alec. Um, <laughs> we synopsis. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Without giving, well, no, I mean, we're, we're doing spoilers. I guess. Yeah. Spoiler. But, like, yeah. If you're, uh, if you are someone that doesn't care about spoilers and listening to this anyway, here is what the story is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony Collette plays uh, Annie, I think she was called. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, she, she is a mum. At the right at the start of the, the movie, her, her mum has died. Mm-hmm. Um, and we see that funeral play out. Um, <clears throat> and uh, she's an artist. She seems to be making little mini sculptures, like things, like sort of dollhouse themed things. She's yeah, she got, makes like commissioned. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, like an artist almost. Like, like, yeah, dollhouse. It doesn't even look like dollhouses. It's more like, like almost like professional, like. Like mini archi- models. Oh, yeah, archi- like, like architect dioramas. maybe. Diagram, models. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're, not, yeah. they're definitely not like toys. <clears throat> they're like, yeah, like, yeah, totally, yeah. Like, like done with the theme of like a doll's house, but like, mm-hmm. it's yeah, very yeah. precise it's, um, and accurate looking. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, and she's clearly successful. That she's got like an installation, a gallery, kind of going ahead, um, mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, and then uh, there's her family. Like the dad is kind of this. Uh, mm kind of repressed guy he's, no, he's, he's quite he's quite an odd character he's, he's quite quiet and mm-hmm. um kind of keeps to himself mostly mm. uh there's clearly some tension going on in the family uh the son uh peter seems a little distant from them and the daughter charlie uh clearly has some kind of issues going on yeah yeah and they mentioned um, that like when they're at the funeral like kind of the start of the movie they kind of go over how they like don't really get on with their gran and that she was very secretive their whole life and uh, yeah, she, yeah, they, yeah. she got on with the younger daughter Charlie, but not with anyone else, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or she and really, she really wanted to have control over the kids. Yeah, but she wouldn't. Yeah, no. she wouldn't. She wouldn't let him. She, the the mum says she wouldn't let her have Peter, but she let her have Charlie, which is interesting as well. 
Yeah, there's there's definitely some implications of like the the Grand being very manipulative, mm-hmm. and like uh, a little too close with Charlie, and yeah, mm-hmm. it's uh, yeah. It seems then, like they've had her cult had the overall goal from a very early stage of those children being born. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah, and there's even a mention of uh, the Grand wanted Charlie to be a boy. Um, yeah, and things like that, which comes into play later on. Mm. Um, yeah, the mum was like, "I used to be a tomboy. It's okay to." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then as the movie goes on, since seeing as we're doing spoilers, uh, through a series of events, quite a convoluted series of events, but mm. it does happen. Uh, Charlie is killed in a car accident. Decapitated. Um, Jesus, decapitated. Yes. <laughs> um, and that just sends Tony Collette's character into a spiral and. The movie goes from there and it starts to get into uh, she's approached by someone who is doing seances and mm-hmm. uh, Big Brenda. Big, 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 big Brenda. Big Brenda. Big Brenda. We, we called her Brenda. Her name is Joni in the movie. <laughs> she's called the yeah. character's called Joni. We know that specifically because she has a doormat that says Joni on it. <laughs> yeah. So she's she's basically lured in by Joni that's kinda trying to console her and all that, but it turns out that she's a snake. And she's actually one of our granny's pals, and she's yeah. part of the cult, and she's she realizes so, yeah, that um, with the doormat and stuff. Yeah, to big, add some, big Brenda. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was just just to add some detail to that as well. They are trying to summon one of the kings of hell called P- Payman. It was yes. Uh, is... They're trying to give it a human host, and it only it only accepts male hosts, whereas Charlie was female. And uh, they go through this the whole arduous process of selecting Peter, the other kid. That the grand didn't like. But the thing is, though, the yeah. thing is, though, it's Charlie, though. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Charlie was so payment, it's like yeah. Charlie is payment. Yeah. It's but a, she yeah, needs it's, a human, uh, she needs a male body. Yeah. So it's, Charlie is payment. It's only explained yeah. very briefly right at the end of the film. Mm-hmm. But, it, but yeah, I think essentially what's going on is the grand decided that Charlie should be the host for payment. Uh huh. But, mm. but the host that needs to be a male. And which is why she wanted Charlie to be a boy. And then later on, after Charlie dies, they see an opportunity to kind of insert Charlie into Peter and then kind of make him into this payment thing. And it's, it, yeah, it's. So do you think. Very weird. So you think they already did a thing where they made payment into Charlie? No. I think so. Mm-hmm. So, right, very early in the film, there's a kind of recurring thing about the, the, the light that kind of, kind, of, that kind of moves across the room and kind of focuses on a point. Mm. and charlie sees that mm-hmm. and kind of goes over to it and every time that happens someone kind of gets possessed or something mm-hmm. um and that's the first time it happens in the movie and charlie sees it and goes over to it i think from that point yeah in some way payment is in her ah, that's, and yeah. then when she dies <coughs> mm-hmm. that's when the cult sees opportunity to be like okay we'll take that spirit with the two of them in there mm-hmm. and put it into peter yeah so yeah. That he has a male body um right yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this is this is on one viewing. I could be in part of that wrong, but yeah, like this yeah, is yeah. We, we literally about five minutes ago finished the movie. Yeah, totally. Stop totally. <laughs> right. um, along. But yeah. yes. Um. So yeah, and yeah, the most of the rest of the movie is just about the family kind of spiraling. Really interesting, kind of like it's it's a definitely a movie of two halves because the first like it's kind of not much of a horror movie really for the first hour. Yeah, like there's not there's, there there is a there is a brief look. You see the gran as a ghost at one point, and there's kind of horrific imagery, but there's not a lot of actual sort of. So it's horror a lot. Stuff of, happening. Yeah, it's not. It's it's not a horror movie that gives you like a lot like jump scares throughout it. It's more just like tension building and it's kind of disturbing burn. disturbing images kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's there's a lot a long period of tension building with very little kind of supernatural stuff happening, and then second half when Big Brenda. Uh, approaches <laughs> Tony Collette about the sale and stuff. That's when things really start to kick off. Yeah, and uh, it, and it's and it's interesting because yeah, you 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 think this is a movie just about <clears throat> this mum losing her daughter, and I I can't even assume that that's the direction it was going to go. Was like, you know, just like the, the she tries to bring the daughter back, and that's kind of yeah yeah. What the plot is it becomes a very different thing by the end. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, it kind of took me by 
like off guard. I was like, all right, yeah. so now. It, it, yeah. <laughs> Zero to a hundred. I, I didn't realise like that the Peter character was going to have so much importance to the end of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought he might just be like one that would just, well, he'll be knocked off any minute. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's clever because like he does seem like the just a sporting character. For yes, he time. seems a bit mm-hmm. expendable. Yeah. <laughs> but then when you think about it, the movie opens with him. The opening shot is him in bed. You know, yeah, so no, is. totally. But it, it makes you, know. you feel that he's gonna like Charlie's gonna do something to him mm. because it kind of, you know what I mean? It kind of shows yeah, that she's it, kind of eyeing up the knives and she's beheading the pigeons yeah, and she's. Yeah, totally. Do you yeah, know what I mean? It kind of it kinda hints to Charlie being sort of like, right? The way that I would think, the way that I would describe it is it kind of starts off like you think it's gonna be Charlie who's just gonna murder people because mm-hmm. reasons. But then after she dies, the movie kind of takes a swerve and it's like, oh, <laughs> where are we going yeah, from here? Like it's, it's definitely playing with like... It's playing with like, audience expectations. Yeah, it's it's hinting towards the kind of movies you've seen before so that you think it's going to go that way. And yeah, yeah. It's smart. And like, yeah. Yeah. It's a very um, intelligent movie. Yeah. It's... Uh, yeah. It's it's fucking hell. It's it's not a cheery. It's not a cheery one. I mean, no. horror movies rarely are cheery, but even then, though, particular. some a lot of horror movies still have some light heart, a light heartedness to it. More jump scare movies, like they'll have a few yeah. jokes or something, like somebody uh, joking yeah. about, and then you'll get the scare, and it will throw you off guard because you've just been laughing. Yeah. Whereas this we was were, just grim all yeah. the way through. We were nervously adding our own laughs. Initially, when you think when you think Brenda's, like, well, we're, yeah, we're, we started referring her to, as, to her as Brenda, and then Brenda when she's being nice. And then uh, whenever I saw a piano I, in the corner, I was, like, oh come on, Peter, he's a wee fair bad blues. <laughs> and uh, I, we got particular enjoyment out of Gabriel Byrne, the fact that he's very much just the audience surrogate character. Yeah. And just, every so he often he'd just be like, "What the fuck is going on?" Like, Jesus yeah. fuck. Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> I think we should go through right. I think now we should go through our notes from like start to end and just see what we have yeah. written throughout the movie. Yeah, my first cool. note is just great opening shot, which is true because uh, yeah, yeah. it was this long tracking shot. It started seeing the, the treehouse through the window mm-hmm. and then pulled back, turned around the room, which is the mum's studio, mm. and then slowly zoomed into one of her miniatures, which then turned into Peter's room. Mm. And like the dad comes into the room and gives him a suit for the funeral. And, like, yeah, that was a beautiful. Well, while shot. you were thinking about the the Im- like imagery of the shot, I was going, man, like, what's the market price on that house, man? That is like <laughs> good. Was, my first note is nice house and interior decor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that came up a lot. It was it was a nice house <laughs> throughout was... the whole film. Every time there was like a really tense scene, somebody would go. Uh, some nice curtains there. <laughs> I don't know how much they paid the for bloody them. curtains were the same fucking colour as my shirt, man. <laughs> so they were. Yeah, that's true. Your, um, what did you say? What colour did you say that was again? Aubergine green. Aubergine green. Oh, aubergine green. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Okay. Oh, I should right. explain. We're seeing each other through Discord. We're not actually in person, but yeah. 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 Um, yeah. No, no. The cinematography throughout, there's a lot of really cool. I'm a sucker for a long tracking shot, and yeah. same. There was there was quite a few of them. Um, shows a lot very, of it, very yeah. Shows a lot a lot of effort. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, totally. It's a lot of very slow moving and kind mm. of deliberately going around corners really slow, yeah, yeah. so that you're like focusing on it. Yeah, loads mm. of like planned um, out acting as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. actors <laughs> have got to do an actual like long long scene, more like theater or something. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um. What about, what, what, what notes have you guys got? Uh, after that, I've got quite a crafty wee family. <laughs> <laughs> crafty wee family. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, that's they're true. Just, they've got a wee um, art studio, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. What have you, what yeah, have you got, Sean? What have you got, Sean? Uh, most of my work very basic. But, like, I wrote nice acting. <laughs> <laughs> nice acting? <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I genuinely thought the acting in this film was incredible. Especially the right. reactions in particular was. to... Absolutely. To see, like, which isn't the usual aspects. like there i think there's definitely more bad acting in horror movies than good acting like yeah in the, general. Pro- the problem is that because <laughs> you can do horror, horror for movies, so low budget can't you that's that's yeah. the thing there's a lot of bad horror movies that, that i think that's more the problem um mm. but 
it's also a genre that allows for really great acting. Yeah, yeah. It's always overlooked when it comes to award season. And the, actually one, sure. one of my notes later on was just Tony Collette was robbed. Because <laughs> yeah. she, my fucking hell, she was good in this. Like, she, yeah, was she phenomenal. nominated for anything for this? I don't know if she was nominated, but she definitely didn't win anything. And like, once again, it's just like another great. Uh, all these, all these, all these award shows don't mean anything though. Like, no, the audience, not, audience, absolutely. all the bands the audience likes, I think. That's, yeah, I mean, no, just, I, like, I'm, I'm not someone that particularly holds any stock in that stuff, but you know, it would be nice if occasionally they were recognized. I know, it, totally, know? yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, it didn't, yeah. yeah so, it didn't win any awards. <laughs> well, it, was, it won no. two, but not for like the Oscars and stuff. So after, after yeah. their funeral and all that, they were talking about how, how the granny's a bit, a bit not nice. And then right before, yeah. right before a pivotal scene, when you see the granny as a ghost, right before it, I, w- I put down, granny's a bit of a mare. <laughs> <laughs> we all had a good giggle of that. <laughs> and, then she, and then she popped up and I was like, Whoa! I was right. Yeah. He's like, damn. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, on, on the one, I had one note on the funeral. <laughs> just, just, what was that guy so cheery about? <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, the, the guy, smiley boy at the, the start. The guy kind of smiling in the background. But to be fair, that did come back into play later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, he's one of the uh, cult, is, cult guys. Yeah. But it was quite like out of context. It was just at a funeral. This guy gives this big cheesy grin. And it was like, yeah. <laughs> he was pure lathered up later on. Uh, wasn't he? he was pure like he was. Yeah, uh, yeah, he was shiny man. Yeah, he was, very cheer- he was very very cheerful. Uh, yep. yep. <laughs> um, was uh, what, there was a point where she picked up a book called Notes on Spiritualism, and it was just like. Oh, okay, okay, we're at this point already. This yeah. was like ten minutes in. Um, and, the, and then after the next thing I've got is uh, after Charlie beheaded the pigeon. I just thought, why? <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> Turns out like so much foreshadowing with that though. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I've got two notes in the row in a row which are why and then what the fuck, <laughs> which is when, <laughs> which is when, uh, which is when Charlie was beheaded. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, quick note on the music, by the way. Um, yes. With the the composer Colin Stetson. First of all, amazing music. Brown, brown very, score. Brown very score. unconventional yeah. as well. Very had a very good, unconventional. Yeah. Had a good mix of like electronic synths and like normal orchestration stuff. There oh, was yeah. this really cool recurring thing that kind of set us all on edge. Always this kind of this bassy. But it was like this wobbly was, synth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it seemed to always be linked to Charlie um, in yep. particular, or maybe uh, payment. 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 Now that now that we know the context, Ooh, um, yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, uh, no, I really liked that. And then yeah, later on there was these weird when it kind of got down to the more culty stuff. There was these weird kind of ethereal, heavenly kind of sounds going on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, one note I did have on the music actually was the um, the very ending. The music was mm. oddly cheery, but also like really that's the bit I mean. Melancholy yeah, because yeah, it was like with from the bells the and stuff. It, it came yeah. from like their perspective. It's like mm. they've they've accomplished what they set out to do. They're like, yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was the bells that I was like, oh, that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was quite unsettling just with mm. all this going on. Um, yeah, uh, the words on the wall we noticed quite early on. Uh, <laughs> which one of them we thought was satany? <laughs> satany, <laughs> satany. It's a, bit, you... it's a bit satany that. <laughs> yeah. So what did that mean? What was that one that I said? I think uh, there was, so I've got some of them written down. There was Satan, Lift Touch, and Pandemonium. Pa- um, yeah, Lift Touch. Pa- I'm just yeah. having a quick Google while you are doing that. <laughs> I think the scene, there was a scene where um, Big Frienda turned up at Peter's, Peter's school mm-hmm. and was like shouting across the road. And I think she's she starts shouting kind of weird words. Uh, yeah. I think it's just culty Ooh. stuff. I think she's trying to kind of, yeah, yeah. you know, do something with that. Try to prep them. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, uh, yeah. it's it's Hebrew. Ah. Uh, and it's also linked uh, very heavily with necromancy. Ah, uh, okay, interesting. That um, makes sense. Yeah, we 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 caught onto the Satan thing quite early. Mm-hmm. Um, we caught onto like, the cult shit very early. <laughs> yeah, like it, it wasn't really specifically Satan in the end, but it was, like there was definitely some King Payment. Some satanic shit going down. So what was and he? It, one of the five? What was the he? Eight kings yeah, of he was hell. like the, the eight kings. Yeah, eight kings of hell. Yeah, um, right. King King Payman. He is um, also a real deity. Like it's not made up for the film, and people actually do worship him in that kind of culty way as well. Nice. Mm. That was, so I was, I'm, I'm was on one of think, the lists I was looking I'm at. Still try, I'm still trying to figure this out though. Like, so what, Charlie what 
is Charlie him resurrected? I don't think it's quite as literal as that. No, I, th- I think I think Charlie is normal, but just like um, the grand kind of sees her as a the perfect kind of vessel, um, but she's female, you know, and and the, the, the guy needs to be male. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. and yeah no like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's i'm just trying to think if he but, was yeah. in her before and then do you know what i mean like because i don't think like, yeah I, know, I, I think i think she's he's there so i think i think when the she when she kills the bird yeah. i think that's him right okay yeah. um my that, theory that is sense. that she was born as king payment in the wrong body if that makes sense uh, yeah that's what i was thinking but the thing that, is, and that's why she's a bit, a bit that, strange yeah. and, and that's why she's re- a bit strange in the film yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's maybe maybe a bit of that, but he's, he's not quite. But then dear. Yeah. that's why yeah, the yeah. grand would. That's why the grand would be so like involved Take, with her, taking care of, taking care yeah, of yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's creepy shit. Yeah, um, <laughs> I've, I've got next. I've got here. Um, Dad looks like knockoff Michael Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, to some extent, I, I, I feel bad for Gabriel Byrne because <laughs> I loved him as well. I mean, he was, I know he was great. I know, but he just kind of, you know, you just get those actors that you can like. <laughs> yeah, um, it did occur to me at one point as well. Uh, like we, we were kind of like we spent a lot on the movie, kind of like is she Satan? Is he Satan? What's going, what's going on? Here? Yeah. <laughs> like, like Everybody was Satan by the end of it. And then there was a point where we were like. Is Gabriel Byrne Satan? And then it was, and then it kind of occurred to me like, oh my god, he's played Satan in End of Days. It's the same character. <laughs> yeah. like, it's just but back. Then, this is then, End of Days too. I was glad. Started, that, sorry, what was he saying, John? I was just gonna say once we started making that accusation, he started acting weird. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, just in our perspective, we were like, hang on a minute. I was like, yeah, because yeah. there was accusate. There he he kept on throughout the movie. He kept on getting emails and phone calls that mm. the Grand's grave was being like. Um, like desecrated, desecrated, yeah, yeah. And then, and then, when the body turned up in the attic, we were like, "Oh well, we haven't seen anyone else put it there." And the mum mm. was yeah, going to those meetings, yeah. so we we're like, "It must be him." So who was that that did that then? I think basically Brenda, actually. Um, I think it was Big Brenda, or yeah. maybe Tony Collette sleepwalking. Um, maybe it was Big Brenda. She's a bastard. <laughs> big, big Brenda, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad they didn't do it. I'm glad he was like an innocent character throughout. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Which is a bit of a shame, to be honest. I know, I know. Yeah. He was the most likable character, definitely. So um, how? Yeah. So I'm trying to work out what how his how he ended up linked to the book when she burned the book because it was linked to her. I was wondering I, that. I might be able to answer that. Go for that. Go for it. So when the book, when she originally burned the book, you noticed it was it was just her arm. I think it was uh, Payman protecting that link by like setting her arm on fire. But and then as soon as she took it out and just started stamping on it, noticed that the fire didn't go away at the same time as the book. It kind of faded away. Mm. So I think when she tried to burn the book again to make it all seem like it was going to happen, she killed King Payman. Killed uh, Gabriel's character. That's kind of where I was going, yeah. So you th- you think it's like it's not literally she's on fire because the book's on fire. She's, she's on like, fire she's because book, she's put the book on fire. It. Yeah, she she's put the book on fire, so payment has put her on fire. Like yeah, you know, like, um, mm-hmm. so I think so. Well, so when she throws the book in the fire towards the end as a punishment, he kills the dad basically. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is why yeah she she's not prepared for that at all. She doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Really they're not actually <laughs> linked. It's just him fucking with her. Yeah, and, and then it's Payman that is the, himself. It's exact. Yeah, it's exactly at that moment as well when he fully kind of possesses her. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, what yeah. else have I got here? <laughs> I wrote down Dave Grohl's scene at one point. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah exactly. I mentioned, it was a quiet moment and I mentioned how funny we, we were talking about Satan and stuff and I was like, how funny would it be if Dave Grohl just came in and was like, I'm the devil, I can do what I want. <laughs> Jim Jack Black yeah. in the background, like, just fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck. Um, yeah, I also mentioned um, there's there's long stretches with very little dialogue in this movie. I'd be interested to know like how many pages the script was because like yeah, yeah, totally. Because like there's a kind of rule, like a rough rule that like 
a page equates to about a minute of screen time. Mm -hmm. So if you have a 90 minute movie, it's about 90 pages. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like that'd be skewed in this case because there's yeah. definitely long stretches of just Yeah, it was a lot of... Like, yeah. yeah. And I liked what they did with the music as well where they, like, even mm. when there was dialogue, like, in the classroom, you heard it from mm. the person's perspective of it being really muffled, and you just heard the, the tension of the music, and the, the dialogue yeah, was, totally. like, really skewed and weird. Mm. Yeah. yeah um, I've also got here, uh, Annie is nothing like her Broadway play counterpart. <laughs> <laughs> I was misled. I would like my money back, yeah. sir. <laughs> money back, please. Um, this is not just, what I came here to see. <laughs> just, just while you were talking about the script length, I looked online to see if I could find it, and I have found the entire script. Oh, oh nice. okay. Well, it's, it is one hundred and nineteen pages. Okay. Uh, so it's a, okay, you well, That's not far off what you said. Movie, yeah. That's not yeah, far off. Yeah, it was, off, a, it was about it was about a two hour movie. So yeah. Um, <laughs> but just, yeah, um, I've got all the interesting trivia. By the way, <laughs> I've no, got some the what, what else uh, you got? What else you got written down, Jake? Um, well, I've got. <laughs> I wrote down anti drug ad at one point because it definitely at one point <laughs> it was like, totally was. Don't smoke <laughs> weed. Like, don't smoke weed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, hmm. So we also we'll, agree with that when, message. <laughs> so when um, when Charlie had the allergic reaction, quote unquote, yeah. to the to the weed cake. It was, we a weed it was a weed cake. We're assuming that's. We're assuming it's a weed cake. I think it's. A, I think it is a weed cake, though, isn't it? It yeah. might have been. There were. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> and then Peter later on also has an allergic reaction to when the his same throat thing, swells yeah. up. So is that what is that? Is that payment? Well, so this is one thing hmm. I'm wondering: is that like, was it an allergic reaction, or what? Like, did, did she? She she's a kid. She wasn't expecting it to be a weed cake. She's getting stoned and she has a panic attack where she can't breathe. That's a good point, actually. And yeah, she yeah. thinks, she, like, she thinks that's what's happening to her. Yeah, because um, there's definitely a thing of they both have bad anxiety. Yeah, Peter and Charlie. Um, and that's that's what I think happened. It might that might not be true, but no. I, and in terms of when it happens to Peter later, I think that in, in that case is it, it's 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 just it's happening to him. Like like you know the, the payment stuff is coming through. I, again, I actually be totally wrong. Yeah, I yeah. I even think that maybe it's not payment at all, and it might just be because Peter saw what happened to Charlie, and because of what happened to her, and he's getting ang anxious about it, and then he's almost yeah. got like a kind of PTSD symptoms where he's kind of feeling the same symptoms as her. Yeah, no, absolutely could be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this that's yeah deliberately open to like it could be this or it could be. Yeah, yeah. Um, I see that more likely than mm. it just being payment yeah. all the time. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're all payment at it again. Ah, oh, fucking <laughs> payment. Well, he is <laughs> the mischief payment. guy, isn't he? I read that. And uh, that's true. Well, he was the god of mischief. That's true. Yeah. Um, uh, almost uh, like um, Loki. A wee bit. Yeah, there's definitely, yeah, definitely a bit of Loki thing going on, but this this hell version. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, what else have I got? Tony Collette was robbed. A lot of long Tony tracking Col shots. Talked about that already. Yeah. Um, I've got... Um, <laughs> I've got <laughs> Granny's having a BBQ. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's it, one of the one of the first few kind of flashes to when you see the Gran. She was like in the kind of garden, that, like in the garden. Yeah. And Charlie like sees queenly. her, and there's just like fire all around her. And I was just taking the piss, saying it looks like she, oh she's baking some chip lattes. Come on, everyone, <laughs> what doing? Granny's yeah, having a party. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting thing I forgot about. Actually, like I wonder. If that's meant to be something Charlie saw her doing mm -hmm. when she was younger, mm. like oh, maybe her just doing culty stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be a shout. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of interesting parts could in this. Be a shout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could be a shout. Uh, <laughs> two of my notes in a row are in capitals. Friend of Satan, and then the next one is. Oh wait, Frienda might actually be Satan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She kind of is. She kind of makes on. the plot. She makes the plot happen. No, she does. Yeah, like at least, at least thematically, she is. Yeah, she, I've she got. Um, the plot a wee bit. I've got Joan yeah. has some nice plants. <laughs> she does. Does she? Nice does she? Yeah. <laughs> See for these cult cult dudes, man. They've got some nice wee crafty houses. <laughs> you know what I mean? They've got some proper <laughs> wee, wee nice plants and wee nice. You know what I mean? Nice oh, tables yeah. for for psychopaths are very cult. well decorated. Yeah, a lot of There's money. A lot of what well, money, money cult. cults. Yeah. We're, we're, in, we're in the wrong industry. Should, Actually, should we start a cult? 
Guys, let's start a cult. <laughs> jo- join the yeah, SRMC yeah. cult. <laughs> SMRC. No, we know you are right. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck the God son. Damn it. Um, <laughs> one thing I've got written down actually, it was absolutely hilarious listening to Sean's reactions because he's he was very vocal. Like every time there's like a long tracking shot, you're like, I don't like this. I don't like this. It'd be like a wee scary bit, and Sean would be like, Oh, <laughs> see, I am simultaneously the best and worst person to watch a horror movie with. <laughs> it was funny as fuck, man. I, 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 I could hear you talking through your hands. You were just like, <laughs> I've got like, down here, um, Dad is heavy whipped. <laughs> she was. Yeah. He was a bit of a shit and, and then I've got um, Annie's character said, can't, uh, Annie can't let anyone be happy, you know, when she's having the, the talk with her son. Oh, they were, yeah, they were yeah, almost yeah, trying to kind of have a normal conversation and she was like pure no like, you killed my daughter basically oh the dinner scene was that yeah, was yeah. heavy there's a yeah, lot no, of heavy that, scenes actually I've not seen the scene before but I've seen that that scene mentioned as like yeah here here is Tony Collette's Oscars like yeah she should, should have won an Oscar <laughs> totally. for that she that was scene, snubbed yeah. one of the the scenes that got me as well was the uh, well, first kind of scene that freaked me out was for some weird reason is the one where she's like sleepwalking and she's like having an argument with Peter mm. and then already mentioned yeah. like before in the movie about the paint stripper incident yeah and they were yeah, just like just having a shouting changed. match and it and there, there was like a weird edit and then it was just like they were all both shouting at each other covered in like soaking wet covered in paint stripper yeah, yeah and it yeah. was just like a pure weird uh, that was a you good... just didn't expect it do you know what I mean that was yeah. good it was cool yeah, it's cool edit and stuff, definitely. Yeah, the, yeah. Whoever edited that movie is a genius. Like, it was really well done. Mm. Yeah, props. Yeah, definitely. All the transitions <laughs> and everything, like. Yeah, it's very good. Um, that's the sort of thing that Midsummer was very good for as well. Like, I can't, I can't fault Midsummer technically. It's just the story wise, it, yeah, it yeah. bugged me a little bit. But maybe I'll like it more in a second year. I did like it, but you know. Um, so yes. Um, what else have I got? <laughs> One of my notes is just. Gabriel Bird. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got down here. Um, Charlie's drawings are shit. Family art skills are not hereditary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Charlie, get your shit together. Come on, <laughs> come on, payment. You're better than I, this. I feel like if I was a movie reviewer, like for a, a newspaper, like that's just what I would. That would be my quote for this movie. <laughs> Charlie's drawings are shit. Family <laughs> art skills are not hereditary. <laughs> uh, you just didn't get the movie. No, at all. No. <laughs> What's all this about Satanism and that? But Charlie's drawings. Her <laughs> fish. Go uh, to art school, you prick. <laughs> uh, my notes. My notes definitely got more and more just like writing what I thought rather than actually anything critical. Same, about the movie. same. I've got like book is like a voodoo doll. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I, I, I didn't just, even take that many notes to be honest. No. I, I just wrote down I just wrote down what you said at one point, which is just Peter is a secret Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> I was just when it kind of started to build that ramp up to the end of the movie and he was kinda getting chased about. I was just waiting for him to just whip out some full on karate, do you know what I mean? Just like like Annie was height, like kind of snaking up in the top corner, and I was waiting her to pounce down and him just to beef yeah, her yeah. in the <laughs> uppercut her in the jaw. <laughs> yeah, there was there was some great um, foreshadowing a few points. Like, and like I, there was a point where um, a yeah, the, the, the dad, like the dad and Peter came in. I can't remember the dad's character's name. Uh, uh, Mister Whippy. What was this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, he's Gabriel Byrne. I'll Google it quickly. Um, it's because you throughout the whole movie you've been referring to him as Gabriel Burns. And I don't think they ever say his name once in the movie. I think we they just call him Dad. I don't remember it. They just no, call him Dad. I think Steve. Steve. His name was Steve. Steve. <laughs> See, Steve. You could tell that they wrote this whole movie right without giving him a name, and then they were just like, "Fuck, what do we call this fucking guy?" No. Steve. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> Steve Dalu. <Dallou. laughs> Uh, yeah, no, um, there's a great moment actually, which it kind of hit me later on. Like, he, he come into the house and and he's like, What's that smell? What's that smell? He's kind of talking about that. And he mm. goes up to see the mum, and she's kind of destroyed her art studio. Mm-hmm. So he gets distracted and stops talking about it. 
Mm-hmm. Of course, yeah. later on you go, oh, that's the body. That's yeah. the, there's a the, the, the grand's body yeah, is in yeah. the attic upstairs, and he's smelling that decomposing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And that's where all the bugs are coming from the whole time and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing I didn't quite get though. One point, uh, Annie is in the uh, is in uh, uh, Big Friend's house, and uh, <laughs> she get she like finds something. She gets something on her finger. Like, yeah, what, was, what that? was that about? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, hmm. that must be a hint to something, but I can't I'll, I'll have a look. Yeah, okay, check cool. out, Sean. <laughs> You'd be our research guy. <laughs> I'm always the research he's guy. A, I've got, he's, I've got he's my Jamie. Shit. He's the Jamie of the Joe Rogan show. That's what Sean is. <laughs> who's, who's Jamie? <laughs> Jamie's the guy. So Joe, the, Jamie's the guy on the side of Joe Rogan. And whenever Joe Rogan needs something, he goes, "Jamie, pull that up," and then Jamie's on oh, the God, computer. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't. He's our Jamie. Joe Rogan. I don't, <laughs> I've not done in a while, to be fair, but. Yeah. Um, uh, did you guys have the subtitles on, by the way? I don't know. Yeah. You no, did? No, no, I didn't. John, did John, did you? I did. You did. Did I you st- notice towards the end of the movie <laughs> when uh, Tony Collette was like sawing off her own head and you heard it first, the subtitles just came up with flesh tearing and swelching. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ooh. Oh, I was, oh, I was... Did you notice that I started laughing when she started like halfway through? She started doing it, yeah, yeah. Because like, she was, um. she was, she was basically sawing her own heat off, right? And she was, she was doing it, and it was like, oh my god, this person's so on. And then halfway through, she just started like it was just a speed ramp, and she just started, she just, she just doubled this, she just started doubling up the speed, and I started howling, just staring at this person cutting her own head off. Um. <laughs> It just took me off guard to just go like, and yeah, double time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I might have found something on the the hair the thing that she pulls out of the tea. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. Apparently, it's a herb. Uh, according to the script of the film, it was a herb. Uh, and um, when she opens up the box of her mum's things, there is like similar herbs and oils in different containers. So it's kind uh, okay. of like a little tiny reference, maybe a red herring. Right. Okay. Yeah. No. That. That. Because. Yeah. Cause that makes sense. Because they're like the obviously the point. Like Johnny has her name on her doormat, and the mm. implication later on is the mum made that doormat. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah. There's. De- yeah. Okay. That's just another hint that they've spent a lot of time together. Okay. That's cool. I like that. So okay. it could have yeah. been a potential red herring, but also it could have been a link to that. Yeah. Was yeah. she eating <laughs> something there then? It's she was drinking tea. tea. I think. Yeah. Ah. Right. Um, okay. So it was the yeah. same stuff that was. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that yeah. that was the first moment then that she kind of realized. Hang on, I've seen this Technically, before. Technically, yeah, she recognized, and she yeah. she definitely like looked at the doormat like, quite like. Like, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, just like looking at it and then brushing it off. Like, oh, people yeah, have doormats right. with their names on it. Like, that's not you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot of very clever moments like that where it, it hints at something, but then quickly distracts you with something else. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, it was very good at doing that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. I've, the, um, the only last note I've got is when we were still thinking that the dad like we kind of when we started thinking that the dad was a bad guy <laughs> and I thought maybe he putting the paint thinner on the wife <laughs> I, oh thought maybe, I thought maybe she's a good guy all along and she he was, I thought maybe it would cut to something where it was like you know because oh she couldn't remember doing the paint thinner thing so yeah, I thought yeah, maybe totally. he did it and it's just like a ruse and he was maybe part of the cult but right yeah okay that would have been yeah that would have been, been interesting but yeah, there was a point where we were genuinely like, oh yeah. shit, he's the guy. He's Satan. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> totally. Um, we fell right into it. <laughs> yeah, it's good. And there's uh, some good some good use of the Mike Flanagan Hill House style, like having people standing in the background, but just out of focus. And like, mm. Yeah, you're um, you're so quick at spotting those. Oh, because I was searching for them the entire yeah. time. I was just like <laughs> scanning the screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mike Flanagan has fucked me up with horror movies for life. Yeah, I know. Oh. I'd be like, oh, uh, is Granny around? And Jake's like, she's in the top left. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I know. Like, she, that <laughs> was so fast that you spotted that. I was like, how the fuck did you see that? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, man. Yeah, me and Sean instantly yeah. put the brightness up on our computer. Like. <laughs> like, well, maybe I'm watching this a little too <laughs> dark. Oh, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, ask me actually, I have notes. Um I you don't have notes, I've got trivia. I do, actually. Yeah, give us some trivia. Yeah. Um, the movie itself was shot in 32 days. <laughs> That's and quite short. The entirety... For a month? Um, yeah, just over a month. 
uh, the entirety of the ha- house interior was built on a soundstage as well, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, not a real house. Yeah. Yeah, I th- it looks real. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, it was good, a good set. Yeah, good um, there was an interesting one about uh, the composer, Colin Stetson, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, where is it? I've lost it now. Because I had to sc- like, scroll up and down these. Um, he used his own vocal for the score as well. Like So the, the kind of deep throaty singing was all him. Ah, that, oh, that was singing, yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, there was like throat singing right at the end. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other one that I found that I thought was really cool, the comp- like Colin Stetson again, who is a saxophonist, has toured with Arcade Fire and Tom Waits. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good I thought for that Colin was. Stetson. I thought that was a really cool thing. Yeah. Nice. Uh, can you actually? Can you check if is he the same guy that did the soundtrack for Midsummer? Because I, it, it's uh, a, yeah, I can check. I can, I can hear similarities. It yeah. probably would be directors yeah. are kind of. They find their kind of one composer, don't they? And they just kind of stick yeah, with them a lot of the time. Which thing is they're, very, they're seeing as they're very similar little movies as well. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we look. Like so much so that it kind of feels like it was intended as like here's like a cousin movie, you know? Like here's yeah, like, yeah. These are same. intended as like a pair, you know? Same, yeah. Um, totally. mm, her, uh, Midsummer was done by a guy called Bobby Krill- Krillick? Krillick? Different guy. The Hacks and Cloak apparently is Good his name. stage name. Good name, Good Bobby <laughs> Krillick. <laughs> Bobby Kulik. <laughs> Hacks and Cloak is his stage name. Apparently he's okay, a, cool. a DJ of some form. <clears throat> Excellent. Uh, hmm. Right. Yeah, I am out awesome. of notes. Do you have any more trivia for us, Sean? Or are you... Uh, we were talking about the language uh, that was used. Uh, the, and I so we were, yes, yes. Yeah. I thought it was Hebrew. It's a combination of Hebrew and Enochian. I don't know what that okay. is, but cool, okay. Neither do I. <laughs> I do, I've seen the word written down, I've, <laughs> or I've heard... The, it's... Uh, and just an occult language claimed to be angelic of some nice. form. Yeah, so it's, an, okay. a, it's very occult, culty pish. What I think <laughs> we should we should start we should put what I think we should start doing is we should rate the movies out of a hundred. Out of a hundred? Okay. Jesus, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, there's more scope. When you just do ten or something, it's a bit Okay. Yeah. Or sure. we can or we can do it at ten with like points if you want. I mean, no, I mean, yeah, it's the same thing, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, out of 10, go. You want out of 10 or 100? Out of 10, I think uh, it's easier. Let's do it out of 10, let's do it out of 10. Okay, go. Cool. Um, okay, so, well, then first of all, retrospectively then, what would you rate Scrooge? <laughs> what would I rate Scrooge? I'd give a... So you've got to compare it, you can't compare it just as a movie, you've got to compare it as a Christmas movie. Mm. So I'm kind of <laughs> I'm kind of <laughs> basing it not on movies in general, because I think in, if, in movies in general, it'd have a pretty low score for me. I think okay. okay. Like okay. I don't like like I don't like compared to other movies I've seen. It's like that amazing, but compared to Christmas movies, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? Um, I'd maybe go. I'll give it a seven. Give it a seven. seven? Okay, interesting. Okay. Um, John, what about you? Um, I'm kind of doing the same thing as Alec. Is I'm looking at it more as a, a Christmas classic rather than a standalone mm-hmm. movie. So for that, I'd probably give it an. Maybe a seven and a half or an eight, maybe. Interesting. I, okay. I, it's one of my favorite uh, Christmas movies of all time. Mm-hmm. What about you, Jacob? Uh, I'd probably give it like an eight or a nine. I'm maybe looking at it nostalgically, but uh, I did. Yeah, see, it's see because I've never had like Christmas movies are all about nostalgia. I think for everyone. So yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. that's one I've not seen. I'm just kind of. That's fair. Yeah, definitely. It's not one that um, I relate back. Yeah. If you haven't listened to our Scrooge episode, by the way, just uh, go back and listen to it. It's, uh, it's Check episode. it out. Uh, yeah. Hi, so, so this um, head then. What, what right would you do? Out of 10. Uh, Jake, go. Me? Okay. Yes, uh, we'll you go first. On. We'll go in the opposite Ooh, okay. direction it's this a, time. It's a tricky one to read totally. on first viewing, less than an hour after you've seen it. But, uh, I know, totally. Oh, it's um, <laughs> just on first viewing, I'm probably looking at about an 8. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe like a 7.5. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it, really. It's just yeah, yeah, a yeah. kind of like, I don't quite know how I feel yet. You know? Yeah, totally, totally, totally. Um, it's not sunk in. Yeah, um, but I probably it, like it just technically acting wise, all that stuff. I can't really put it lower than that. So like, yeah, I think it's probably about there. Uh, what about you guys? Uh, you as a horror fanatic, it was brilliant and it did hold me. It's a very tense film. Mm-hmm. Um, I. Phew. Again, the acting was phenomenal. The camera work was brilliant. So I'm probably yep. going to say m- probably an 8 or a 9. A low 9, high 8 nope. kind of score. Yeah. Like 8.5. That's fair. 
I'd, I'd go, I, I'd join Sean. 8.5, I think. Excellent. I think, because I think it had some really cool, like the way it was shot and the way it was edited, and acting was on point. And Tony Collette got absolutely snubbed. <laughs> she did, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah. I thought it was overall uh, really good. There's no like major plot things that are hanging out to me, because I think mm. there's some stuff that's meant to be vague. Yeah, you know what I mean, no, like I'm, I'm a bit yeah. kind of like how how the gran end up in the attic, but then yeah. again, do you know what I mean? They, yeah. Like, there's a couple yeah. of things they didn't explain, but l- yeah. every every movie's gonna have that when you start to look into it in depth. And it it's totally the kind of movie that it may well have been explained, but subtly. <laughs> yeah, to, totally. You know? yeah. It needs a second second watch, which I yeah. may, might do in a decade. <laughs> Jeremy, <laughs> no watching to, that again anytime soon. Show One viewing's enough. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm good. I think I'm just. I think I'm just letting my brain ponder on its own rather than analysing it any further. You'll come back to us in the next podcast again. <laughs> You'll come back to us in the next podcast. Like, guys, I've not stopped thinking about hereditary. I don't know. <laughs> so, oh no, yeah, exactly, I like yeah. it. He's gone down the cult hole. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, if we're kind of wrapping up, mm-hmm. uh, uh, yes, uh, let us know how you felt about Hereditary. You can uh, get in touch with us um, uh, in a couple of different ways. You can get in touch with us on our Facebook page, which is Salt River Pictures, um, which is the name of our <laughs> film production kind of company. We run our music videos through that and things like that. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff with that as soon as we can. It's just not very easy right now. COVID's um, permitting. Yes, yes. absolutely. Um, but yes, you can get in touch with us through there. This is this podcast is hosted by Silver River Pictures. Um, so you can message us through that. Um, mm-hmm. And you can also email us at saltrivermovieclub at g- gmail.com. Yep. Um, and uh, let us know what you thought of Hereditary. Let us know if we've got any plot details wrong. It's probably likely. Um, mm-hmm. If anything obvious we've missed, please shout at us and let us know. Yes. Um, Call us yes. idiots. Yes. So what are we watching in two weeks' time? Two weeks' time, we're going to be watching Onward. We are Dis- watching fun it. Disney Pixar movie, which is a nice change compared to this. <laughs> we <laughs> yes, needed some yes. horror. Right. <laughs> yes, we are going to be watching Pixar's Onward, a movie that I have not seen. Sean, you've not seen, right? Nope. Nope. Uh, Alec, I, you have seen. I've seen it twice. You've seen it twice? Yeah, okay. I like it. I love it. It's great. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, I, I, yeah, love, no, I'm, I love I'm Pixar movies, so. Yeah, uh, we had a brief talk about this, actually, but I, I actually watched Soul. Uh, last night and I really enjoyed it but I definitely have to watch it again because my god that movie is weird yeah um, it makes you rethink your life <laughs> it, yeah it's, uh, it's, so, it's it's good it's a lot of fun we'll do, we'll do um, an episode on that at some point in the future that would be good absolutely but for two weeks from now two weeks from when you're hearing this these episodes are going to be coming out on Mondays from now on so as much as we can yep um, and uh, our plan really like, they come out every two weeks but our plan is to record one every week and that way we're going to end up with a big back catalog of them kind of coming to you yep. very, very shortly. Um, and uh, yes, two weeks from now, onward. Yep. If you, wanna, and- if you want to watch it, it's on Disney Plus. It is on Disney you Plus. Get a yes. free trial of that as well, probably. Mm. Yes. Um, 30 day free uh, trial. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, go watch it if you haven't seen it already or if you want to watch it again. Um, and uh, yeah, tune in in two weeks for that. Um, <laughs> um, uh, well, shit, I was going to say something else. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> we, Take your time. <laughs> I'm working on an Instagram for us as well, which uh, we'll be posting a lot on when we can. Um, yeah. However, somebody has stolen our name and we will get it back. We're trying Ooh, to acquire the handle. <laughs> we just, where's the handle? Where is my handle? <laughs> I can't find it. <laughs> Give uh, me. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yes um, so yeah we're going to be watching Onwards please try and watch that uh, and then after that we may be starting a little TV show of some kind <laughs> possibly mm, we'll see what happens but, uh, but uh, we will get to that when we get to that so yes thank you for tuning in this has been episode 4 of the Salt River Movie Club um, we hope you enjoyed Hereditary maybe enjoyed the wrong word but it's a word for it I guess uh, yeah and uh we hope you watched yeah. it and did not tear your eyes out <laughs> yes yes um maybe go watch midsummer it's, it's an interesting movie at the very least as well um but yeah i i, I usually I, my plan is to usually end these episodes with a movie quote what the fuck do i quote from that <laughs> what, <laughs> what the, the fuck is going on <laughs> yeah, yeah just I'll, I'll i'll quote to end us end us off i'll let you guys say goodbye and i'll end us off with a nice little 
a, a nice little Steve wait, Gabriel Burke can I, can I do the quote? But, well, well, I've, I've, got got a, I've got a particular one. Okay, we've we got one. You go. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 we can't, we can't end with that. Absolutely. Fine, fine. Um, yeah, cheers. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you in two weeks. Now for you. Yeah. And right. uh, Jesus, fuck. <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by Salt River Pictures.